NBA. I'm talking players, coaches, and refs. They're all a bunch of Caitlin Clark haters. The Olympic break helped the Indiana Fever more than any other team. And I felt like the Olympic break really hurt Chicago. Cheryl Swoops has made some pretty bold statements lately, especially regarding Caitlin Clark. I don't even know what to say right now because I'm I am frustrated. <laughs> like I'm frustrated with it because like I know a lot of people are like it's not black and white, it's not a race thing. Mm. It feels like we're in the middle of a lively discussion, similar to the Chappelle Show haters ball. Swoops' comments seem to go beyond just criticism. They hint at deeper issues, possibly even racial undertones. Oh, but there's no target, though. Like, that. <coughs> I know everybody's like, well, you're targeting Caitlyn, you're targeting Angel, you're targeting Cam, you're targeting Rakia, you're targeting Kate. Like, I, I don't think targeting is the right word. Okay, um, Cause it's, cause we're, br it's we're bringing our best game against you guys. You're supposed to. Because the eyes is well, against you. That's no, you, but yeah. you're just... supposed to. Many people are starting to doubt Swoops' credibility after she claimed that black individuals can't be racist, which has led to a lot of backlash. Same as you. When you, when you hear people, mm -hmm. and it's a whole lot of them, say things like, well, they shouldn't be playing that hard against Caitlyn. <laughs> What? They ain't never played. No, no, no. No, let me finish. No, not that part. No, that, but let me finish, mm -hmm. because that has been said. Yeah. <laughs> they should be grateful. They should be thankful. They shouldn't go hard against her. Bullshit. Yeah. This raises questions about her objectivity and reputation. It seems her remarks about Clark aren't solely about basketball. They might also reveal personal biases that overshadow any legitimate points she might have. Even if it's a player from overseas, whoever, when they come into the league and you're looking at them like, oh, well, that's a rookie, so let me let him or her just do what they want to do because they're a rookie. And when you start talking about being a villain or being targeted, it was an uproar and outrage when Kennedy Carter hip-checked Caitlin. Was that a basketball play? Absolutely not. Was Kennedy wrong? A hundred percent. As this debate continues, the relationship between seasoned players like Swoops and emerging stars like Clark is becoming more complicated, with accusations of jealousy and resentment complicating the conversation around women's basketball. But it was everywhere, everywhere for a whole week. That's what people wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Black, white, brown, male, female. When Alyssa Thomas clotheslined Angel and took her out, she didn't take her out, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That was worse than what Kennedy did. Facts. But where was the uproar? Where was the uproar? I didn't see it on Sports Center. I didn't see Stephen A. talking about it. I nowhere. Caitlin Clark has had an outstanding rookie season, achieving incredible milestones. One's a villain. Who? The one who says she's a villain. If Draymond gets closed, like well, I didn't hear somebody, her say she's a villain when she came to the league. I heard her say that when she was in college. No, You're talking about saying, Angel. Like, like she okay. wore the Joker shoes yesterday. But what I'm saying is if Draymond right now gets clotheslined by, some, by somebody, no, there's no uproar. She's not just filling stats. She's making a real impact on the WNBA with her impressive numbers and fan engagement. In fact, her first season might even surpass the MVP seasons of Cheryl Swoops. Every time Caitlin gets fouled, <laughs> we can't make it seem like <laughs> she was assaulted. But I'm just get, no. that, <laughs> a foul, fouling in, in, is a part of basketball. Mm -hmm. Like you can look at a whole lot of different games and players and clips and Angel, uh, Asia Wilson when they played Dallas. Asia had a bloody nose, a black eye. She got ill. Like it's basketball. When you look at Clark's averages, 19.5 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 8.4 assists per game, it's clear she's making her mark on the court. This is a phenomenon. Caitlin Clark is a phenomenon. And if I said to any of these people who think Caitlin Clark is not the rookie of the year, I'd say, who would you want to start your franchise with? Now, I'm not going to put Asia Wilson in there. I'm just saying between these two. Angel Reese is a wonderful player, but she does not compare to what and who Caitlin Clark is. Some might argue that she's had one of the best all-around seasons of any player, with Aja Wilson being her only serious competition for that title. But I think MVP. Now, I'm going to look at this the way I did with Michael Jordan. Now, she's not the Michael Jordan of her sport as far as athleticism, playing, dominating. But Asia Wilson is 
the best player in the game. It's remarkable how much she has accomplished in such a short time, especially considering the record she's breaking and the excitement she's generating in the league. As we discuss this topic, it's important to recognize just how impressive Clark's performance has been this year. Angel talk about it. You hear Caitlin talk about it. Both of them were like, Angel's like, listen, I'm always go for the ball. I agree with you. She's not a dirty player. And Caitlin says it was a basketball play. But then you go to social media and immediately, oh my goodness, she's trying to take her out. She should be suspended. And who are you? Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Cheryl Swoops has really stirred the pot with her recent comments about Caitlin Clark. It seems she's putting her reputation at risk by insisting that Clark isn't dominating the game. <laughs> like, like a Stephen A. Smith. It was that important to you to run the Kennedy Carter hip check, right? That was everywhere. But yet, you didn't even discuss what Alyssa Thomas did to Angel Reese. Swoops, a three-time MVP and four-time champion, seems off base in her assessment of Clark. A recent analysis even had to adjust Clark's stats to find a comparable season from the past, ultimately pointing to Candace Parker's 2015 season as the closest match, highlighting just how impressive Clark's rookie year has been. Anytime a basketball play happens towards Caitlin, it's because players are envious, they're targeting her, they're jealous, they're haters, they're racist, I keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. So why isn't that the narrative when something happens to Angel like that? Currently, Clark's averages of 19.5 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 8.4 assists per game are remarkable for a rookie. This situation underscores a gap between past legends and the emerging talent in women's basketball. It's the, it's the villain. I'm a dog. You can't teach that. I'm going to go out and do whatever it takes to win and every single night. My teammates rely on my energy. So being able to continue the energy, even if we're down, even if we're up, that's what I, that's what I do. It's surprising to see Swoops reacting this way to Clark's success. She appears unable to embrace the spotlight on Clark, which is unfortunate given how deserving Clark is of serious MVP consideration. I'm sorry. It's gotten to the point where Rookie of the Year is over two, three weeks ago. All of a sudden, Caitlin Clark is starting to push Asia Wilson for MVP of this league, and I am not exaggeration. Swoops might have some bias against Clark, possibly because Clark brings a new energy to the league that Swoops didn't experience during her time. Honestly, I think work really hard, um, you know, have dreams, chase them, um, but also like there's gonna be moments that are really hard and there's gonna be moments that are great. Uh, that's what every single person goes through in their life, whether you want to be a professional athlete, whether you, whatever you want to do, there's going to be moments of hardship and then a lot of amazing moments, but that's what makes you know, the moments of really great time. Like While Swoops has praised Angel Reese, she continues to criticize Clark despite her impressive numbers. Yes, Clark has had some turnovers, but many come from teammates missing passes and layups. If those were cleaned up, she could easily be averaging a double-double. So, for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like, first of all, black people can't be racist, but, like, that's the farthest thing from my mind, that I speak up for people that look like it's baffling that swoops recognizes dominance in reese's game but not in clark's fans need to stop attacking clark and appreciate the talent she brings to the wnba you women out there y'all petty man hey lebron you 100 percent right on these girls hating on caitlin clark y'all petty girls <laughs> i expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world oh, you are y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. don't be petty like dude the criticism directed at caitlin clark is frustrating especially when compared to what players in the nba or nfl face it's the reality it's tommy's right it's not just race though it's also sexuality uh the caitlin clark is a white heterosexual woman in a black lesbian league and they resent and are jealous of all of the attention. Every contribution she makes this season has been vital. It feels like Swoops is stubbornly sticking to a losing argument regarding Clark's performance. I think the biggest challenge has just been the fact that we've only had like 24 days together. I think that presents a big challenge for our team, especially a really young team and an inexperienced team. So a team that's trying to find their chemistry and how they work together, I would say that's probably the biggest challenge for us. But I think as you've you know, watched us over the course of the first four games, like 
from the first time we played Connecticut to this last time we played Connecticut at home, like there's been a huge difference in how we play and how we play together, and that's just within four games. So um, I think there's a lot of positives, a lot to build off of, but I would say that's probably the, the biggest challenge to us right now, having to go from, you know, game, practice game, and really like, you know, those practice times you can't really do much because you're preparing for your next opponent. It's surprising to see Cheryl Swoops, a three-time MVP, making comments about Caitlin Clark that seem out of touch, especially since her own stats now look pretty modest in comparison. Listening to analysts like Rebecca Lobo and Lisa Leslie feels more trustworthy than Swoops' opinions, which come off as biased against Clark. Now, she made news last week when she sat up there and, and was applauding Indiana Fever players, but then forgot to mention Caitlin Clark. She jumped all in my ass because I sat up there and said, hey, how are you going to ignore Caitlin Clark? It almost seems like there's a personal grudge there, and it's damaging her credibility. You know what she brings to the table. How are you just going to ignore her? That's not an accident. Kate, Cheryl Swoops is a champion. A champion. Look at her tweet and what she put up about me. You talk about whomever and whatever you want to on your podcast, correct? So why can't I? Also, did you listen to the entire episode? Nope. I have a personal relationship with these players, and they deserve recognition as well. That ain't the point, Cheryl Swoops. Yes, I did listen to your entire podcast. You didn't mention Caitlin Clark. What's even more astonishing is that Clark has already outperformed Swoops' career highs in Justin's season. The jealousy from Swoops is hard to miss. She struggles to celebrate Clark's achievements without a hint of resentment. Your personal relationship, what that got to do with your coverage? Ain't nobody said don't mention them. Ain't nobody said don't applaud them. Nobody told you to ignore them. What we're saying is if you're going to give the Indiana Fever all the credit in the world, how are you going to mention the Indiana Fever without Caitlin Clark's name even coming up? It's time for everyone to stop criticizing Clark and start recognizing the talent she brings to the league. She's going to face a level of racism from black players. The numbers speak for themselves. Caitlin Clark's stats actually exceed those of Cheryl Swoops during her MVP years. If that doesn't show dominance, then what does? If Clark isn't seen as dominant, then we have to question whether Swoops ever was. I'll be very jealous. And that, I think, is going to be a monster problem. I hope they get over it for the winning. Guys like to win, even if they're not the star. Well, great, we'll get a championship. Well, everybody jump on Michael Jordan's back. Everybody jump on Larry Bird's back. I don't know if that'll happen with Caitlin Clark. It feels like there's some gaslighting happening here. Swoops appears to be downplaying Clark's impact. It's not just for Caitlin, but you asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player said it. Okay. Cheryl Swoops is really going after Caitlin Clark, and it's starting to get old. That'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all-time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be, and, and I don't think it should be. This situation is concerning, and I can't help but wonder if race plays a part in this dynamic. The level of negativity Swoops shows toward Clark seems excessive and small-minded. While Swoops has had a stellar career, her remarks about Clark suggest that personal feelings are clouding her judgment. Do I need to call you the, the female version of Steph Curry, or do I need to call Steph Curry the male version of Caitlin Clark? Somebody break down the release time, which is pretty much identical to mine. If I were Kathy Engelbert, I would think about reevaluating Swoops' role in media discussions because she seems to lack objectivity. This situation feels very personal for her. I think I'll just be the female version of Steph Curry. <laughs> Great. I, I, I mean, you hear people talking about you and throwing out those comparisons. Speak about how that makes you feel about how you've just taken the world by storm because of your shooting prowess. Yeah, I, I really feel like I'm still kind of in a dream, um, in, a, in a real world. I mean, it's kind of crazy, obviously. Those are the players I kind of grew up watching. Obviously, Steph Curry's kind of changed the game, and he's a player I grew up loving. I still love. I watch him all the time. So um, it's kind of crazy seeing all those NBA players, WNBA players, tweet about you, talk about you. It's time for the negativity to end. Oh, a white girl in Iowa doing mm -hmm. to a bunch of black girls. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm -hmm. here in, yeah. in, in Colorado, wherever. She mm -hmm. did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU, yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs mm -hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them. Caitlin Clark is doing incredible things in her rookie season, and we should be focusing on celebrating her talent instead of trying to tear her down. Guys come out, they're waiting for him. I mean, Camilla's coming, Caitlin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? 
Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's there's <laughs> levels to this thing, and that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side, it, and you're going to see it on this side, where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And... Uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. The whole situation with Caitlin Clark and her critics, especially Cheryl Swoops and Diana Taurasi, is quite interesting. I can't help but think Lisa Leslie is taking a shot at Taurasi with her recent comments, particularly since Taurasi made some outdated remarks about Clark struggling against more experienced players. Speaking of legends, speaking of Connecticut, I think Diana Taurasi had it wrong. I think I think she was the reality. I think Caitlin, they should call her the reality because she she was coming and she's here in this league. She's been great. Those comments seem pretty silly now. This season, Clark has broken around 62 or 63 records, and she just recently scored an incredible 35 points in a game. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the new fans are really sensitive these days. You can't say anything. Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you go from kindergarten to first grade, there's a learning adjustment. And I don't see it being any different. Go from high school to college. Let's revisit what Tarasi said earlier, which you know, hasn't I, I, aged I well. She claimed that while playing against younger athletes might make you look like amazing, anything. facing Great seasoned pros is translate. a whole and, different uh, challenge. She implied that Clark way. would need time to adjust as a rookie, given the records Clark has set and her stellar performance this season. It's hard to deny her dominance on the court. It seems clear that Lisa Leslie is subtly criticizing Diana Tarasi with her remarks about Caitlin Clark. Tarasi had previously suggested that it would take time for Clark to adapt to playing against seasoned professionals, which looks foolish now, especially after Clark's impressive 35-point game. Leslie, a Hall of Famer herself, has shown support for Clark by liking an ESPN post that celebrated her achievements. When you look at the stats, Clark's performance is truly impressive. She averages 19.5 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 8.4 assists per game, along with an outstanding free throw percentage of 90.4. In contrast, Teresi's earlier comments seem petty considering Clark's success. Leslie responded to the skeptics by laughing at those who thought Clark would struggle to adjust hinting at Tarazi's outdated views. This raises questions about Tarazi's recent interactions with younger players, especially after a video surfaced showing her ignoring a young black girl while entering a game. That incident was not well received and added to the scrutiny surrounding her comments about Clark. After Lisa Leslie praised Caitlin Clark recently, it seems like Cheryl Swoops might be feeling the pressure. She has been one of Clark's main critics, and the backlash against her is growing. Many are suggesting that Swoops should take a step back. She's becoming somewhat of a laughing stock. Meanwhile, Leslie is seen as a true supporter of Clark, clearly showing where the respect lies. Swoop seems to be struggling with Clark's rise, especially after Clark's impressive performance where she scored 35 points. Leslie's comment about how she's laughing at those who thought Clark would need time to adjust feels like a direct shot at Tarasi, who previously doubted Clark's ability to compete against seasoned players. It's interesting to note that while Leslie stands firm behind Clark, Swoops appears to be stuck in her negativity. Ken Swift pointed out that when Leslie sat down with Sue Bird and Tarasi, she affirmed her belief in Clark from the beginning. It's great to see legends like Leslie supporting the next generation and recognizing their talent. Thank you, Lisa, for backing Caitlyn and advocating for her against any unfair treatment on the court. It's pretty poetic that Caitlyn Clark's team has a better record than Deanna Tarasi's. The Indiana Fever has beaten the Phoenix Mercury three times this season, which is a reality check for anyone doubting Clark's impact. The games were competitive, but honestly, I never felt worried about about those matchups. I'd love to see a playoff series between them, especially with all the drama surrounding Tarazi and Griner. Cheryl Swoops has definitely taken some heat from this situation, and I believe it's mostly aimed at Tarasi. The amount of negativity directed at Clark in the league is shocking. It feels like some players just can't stand her success. It seems they're upset because Clark has achieved what they thought they would during their careers, but it hasn't happened for them. Just look at the attendance figures. 600,000 fans attended Fever Games this season, far surpassing the next closest team, and it's hard to believe Clark was left off the Olympic team in favor of Tarasi who didn't even play in the gold medal game. What are your thoughts?